Now what we're going to do is go into um, inputting data into the one line. So at this point, all we've done is we've left mouse click. Now what we're going to do is add another feature called a left mouse double click. So I'm going to left mouse double click on this transformer. A dialog box is going to show up and it's going to describe all the details of this transformer. And the really cool thing about Easy Power is um, it starts off with a specification tab. This spec tab is the nameplate data out on this transformer. So you don't have to know anything more um, than getting nameplate data in order to make Easy Power work. Now if I go to my type of transformer, it tells me whether it's oil, gas, silicone or dry type transformer. I'm going to choose oil. Um, it's going to tell me what those the forced oil air rating is, oil air, forced oil air, um, double forced air, and so on. So you can just look at your na your transformer nameplate data and pick it out. In this case I'll pick a 55, 65 degree rating. Now anytime you see a red dot in Easy Power or a red cell, that means that information is required. We cannot analyze this transformer without that information. So if I put in a 1000 kVA transformer and I hit this calculate button, it will determine the force cooled rating automatically based on the type, class, and temperature rating of that transformer. Now if you have a specialty transformer from Europe or Zimbabwe or something, um, you can override our calculate button and put in a you know some sort of specialty rating or if you're a utility and you want to put in a specialty rating you can do that. Now typically we need two um, the first two tabs of any um, equipment in order to um, have enough data to analyze the system. That's the spec tab and either the impedance or the short circuit tab. It's usually the first two tabs. Now in this case you'll see three little red um, dots. In this case it needs a positive sequence impedance, a zero sequence and impedance, and an X over R ratio. So if you look on the transformer nameplate, we can find the positive sequence impedance. You're never going to find the zero sequence impedance on a transformer nameplate. If it's a large transformer, 10 MVA above or something, you might have test data. Um, you'll never find the X over R ratio on the transformer nameplate. So in order to provide that information so you don't have to guess at it, we have a calculate button. We hit calculate and it provides the zero sequence transformer data based on a typical core type design. The X over R ratio based on um, ANSI standards. If we want to make it a high resistance grounded system and if you look over at the little green um, transformer, you'll see that it's solidly grounded at this point. Let's make it a high resistance ground. We'll make it a 5 amp high R ground. We hit the calculate button. We need a 55 ohm resistor to do that. Now when we click OK on this transformer, it's actually going to insert that high resistance ground. So we'll come back to that in a minute. We have other tabs um, on almost all the different pieces of equipment. And the reason we have other tabs is they do different functions. This TCC tab allows us to plot the ANSI C57109 damage curve um, based on the transformer information. Now if we had chosen a dry type it would be a different ANSI C57112 or I, for, I forget the exact number. So this allows us to plot the 100% withstand curve, the unbalanced derating curve, whether or not we're using frequent or infrequent fault curves, the magnetizing inrush, the number of cycles. It even allows us to determine if this is an unsupervised or a supervised um, system for our automated coordination. If we're modeling load tap changers, such as maybe you have an incoming for a petrochemical refinery or a pulp and paper mill, we can model the from side or the to side. We can control the from side or the to side. We can control voltage or megavar flow through the transformer. So if you have the transformer paralleled with generation, we can have you know one on PV control, another on VAR control. Um, we we can model any step size, any tap range. It's just a simple matter of um, plugging it in. Harmonics. If we need to model harmonics, we can model the eddy current losses and the resistance factors. Stability. Um, we can model. Um, transformer inrush parameters so we can uh, model all sorts of dynamics with the transformers and set relays and things. 
there's always a comments tab. Okay, the comments tab, so you can put, uh, say, NEC violations, um, design notes, um, all sorts of information, maintenance-related information um, that you want to keep track of. Another option we or feature we have is called hyperlinks, where we can actually add documents to the one line. So we can add items such as um, lockout tagout procedures, um, uh, transformer oil testing, uh, breaker um, uh, testing sheets. Anything we need to know about this power system can be linked to the one line so it can automatically be retrieved by your electricians, your safety managers, and things. This includes lockout, tagout procedures, and safety programs. I'll just cancel out. We'll come back to this a little bit later when we, when we get into the arc flash hazard area. So when I hit OK, notice that it creates um, the high resistance ground. I can left mouse click, stretch this out a little bit. I can go grab a CT. We'll left mouse click, snap a CT in, and a relay. I can left mouse double click on this CT, make it a 5 to 5 um, ground CT. Double click on the relay, make it a 51 alarm relay. I'm not entering the manufacturer and the curves at this point, but we can come back and do that later. And there we have a high resistance um, ground package.